What's going on, everybody? Lil Chris here, and welcome back to another pool coaching lesson. Today, I'd like you to meet Tian, and I really hope I pronounced that correctly. He comes to us from South Africa, so I've got another player from across the waters. And he's actually going to explain what he's going to do for us today, so let's hear what he has to say. Hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to shoot a video where I play through three racks of eight ball I'm playing black ball rules. Black ball is a variation of eight ball rules for um, British pool. Um, two main differences is with foul, you can pick up the whites and you have a free shot in your second visit. Well, not your second, your, your actual visit. So in your free shot, you can shoot any ball, um, except you may not pocket the black. Also, a skill shot is allowed where you can put your ball and your opponent's ball in the same shot. This video is for little Chris, who recently subscribed to my channel. Thank you for that, Chris. And, um, He's a great pool instructor from America. I'm a big fan of his channel. I'll link it in the description below. And little Chris, please comment on my, my playing style and um, any tips and advice would be much appreciated. Thank you. So as you heard, Tian has his own YouTube channel and I'll provide a link in the description below. So be sure to drop over by his channel and give him a subscription after this. And he's gonna be playing through three racks of eight ball using black ball rules. And the biggest rule that stood out to me that he explained was that free shot that you get after a foul, where you can essentially do whatever you want except for shooting in the black ball, and then you proceed with your actual turn. So in reality, you have two turns, making safety plays very powerful if you can actually get your opponent to foul. So as he requested, let's see what he does with these three racks, and let's see what we can do to help him out. All right, Tian. Show us what you got with this first rack. Okay, pretty nice solid break there. We saw a yellow and a blue drop. And I'm assuming with black ball rules, if you at least make a ball on the break that you have an open decision on choosing blue or yellow, or is it play what you make? Maybe you can clarify that with a uh, comment after the video. Start off with a combination on the blue, so you have to try to run the remaining blues out before you shoot the black. Okay, nice little draw stroke there. Ooh, we got a bit of a rattle there. Okay, so now we have to try to shoot the yellows. Okay, I like taking out those two yellows there. That pretty much completes that half of the table. Now you only need to focus on this half of the table. Just a bit of an undercut there. I was wondering how much you were going to be able to try to cut that ball and avoid the scratch in the bottom left corner. So now back over to blue. Good shot to the side pocket there. Okay, where are you going to play the black? Okay. 
top right corner pocket. Ooh, but we overcut that one. One more shot at yellow, maybe? That's a good back cut shot now. Top this one off. And we can. Okay, awesome. So I believe that was two full turns in what would be our APA league that we have uh, here in the States. And actually, I, I'm sorry, you didn't complete the second full turn because you finished as the yellow player, which is the second player here. So actually, you completed that rack in one inning, which is really, really good. So I did see a couple of spots that I might be able to provide some comments on. So let's go take a look at them. So here's the first spot that I wanted to comment on. This is the opening shot after the break where you had made both blue and yellow on the break. And I checked the rules on this real quick, so correct me if I do have this wrong. Since you made both blue and yellow on the break, you now get to choose what set you're going to be regardless if you make your next shot. Here we can see you're choosing blue by shooting a combination. And if you missed this combination, you would still be blue and the next incoming player would be yellow. Now, had you made only the blue on the break, you would then be the blue set. And had you made only the yellow on the break, you would then be the yellow set. Again, correct me if I have that wrong. Now, what you started with was shooting the white into this blue to play a combination to this blue. And then you proceeded with the rest of the blues until you had about three left because then you missed. And I think you were shooting at this corner pocket here when you did. Now, I'm not commenting on this spot because you were unsuccessful at shooting blue. I think had you not missed the blue that you did miss, you probably still could have been able to finish the table. The reason why I'm commenting on this spot here is because I probably would not have started with blue. I think I actually would have started with yellow starting with this yellow ball here into the corner pocket. I would then allow my cue ball to run into the side rail and probably with just a touch of left spin, have the cue ball come over here for position on this yellow to which I can shoot in with just top spin and have the cue ball come towards the middle of the table to play this yellow here into the left middle. That should allow me to transition either to any one of these yellows here to be able to almost pick them off in any order. And then depending upon the order, that should allow me to have the black to go in either of the middle pockets or maybe even the corner pockets. And you did end up playing the black ball here into the top right corner pocket. I like this pattern better because the cue ball movements is a lot smaller than what we saw you do with blue. So it's not like there's anything wrong with blue, but there were a couple of shots where your cue ball did move quite a bit. And I think with the pattern that I have here for yellow, you do have smaller cue ball movements, therefore it's easier to control. And in my opinion, you just have a higher chance at being successful. Here's the next spot that I wanted to comment on. This is during your run of blue after the break, and this is the shot that you missed. You were trying to play the white into this blue here into the top left corner pocket. It's just that the blue rattled and stayed here while the white landed somewhere right around here. Now, what I'm curious about is if you were successful at potting that blue, what was the rest of your run out going to be? Because the only thing I see is to play this blue here into the bottom left corner pocket. And with a touch of topspin, you can have the white carry forward to land hopefully somewhere right around here to where you then can play this blue, but you would have to cannon it off of this yellow to go into the top right corner pocket. Otherwise, when you play this blue, you can put bottom spin on the white or what is referred to as screw and draw the cue ball back to about this position, still having to play this blue and have it cannon off of the yellow into the top right corner pocket. I think either way, that pretty much means that the black is most likely going to have to be played here into the bottom left corner pocket. Though this pattern here is possible, I think it is harder than the pattern that I see that I probably would suggest. I would have started with this blue here into the left middle. And with screw on the white, you can draw the cue ball down to this rail and have it just come up here to where you then can play this blue into the top left corner pocket, still get the position that you originally got. But from here, now all you have to do is just play the blue into the bottom left. And you can even hold the cue ball here. You can let it drift forward slightly 
but nonetheless, you would end up playing the black into the right middle pocket. I think this run out pattern here is just a lot easier because you don't have to worry about trying to cannon the blue off of the yellow into the top right corner pocket. At this point of the rack, you're now shooting yellow. And when you got to this position, I would have thought that you would have played this yellow into the bottom left corner pocket, but instead you played this yellow into the bottom right corner pocket. Now, one of the hardest things that I have to deal with when I'm doing these coaching videos is give advice based on the camera angle versus what is actually possible at the table. And the reason why I say that is this camera angle does make me believe that you could have played this yellow into the bottom left and with top spin on the white, just have it carry forward, maybe even bump into the blue to where you can get position on this yellow or this yellow. And depending upon which one you get, you should still have a pattern to where you're going to play the black in either of the middle pockets or the top right corner pocket to which you did eventually play. But if the camera angle is lying to me and the white would actually go behind the blue to where you could get schnookered, could you have gone completely around the blue and still get position on either of these yellows here? The main reason why I like playing this shot here, if it is possible, is because you're just continuing to transition down to the lower half of the table versus having to come back to the middle of the table when you tried to play this yellow here into the left middle pocket and you end up undercutting it because your white was somewhere over here when you played the last shot. And this is the final spot in rack one that I'm going to comment on. You're still shooting yellow and you're about to shoot this yellow into the bottom right corner pocket and with screw and right spin on the white, you draw the white over to this side rail, but then the right spin causes the white to spin to your left and you overhit it a bit because it lands somewhere right around here to where you had to back cut your last yellow into the left middle. You just undercut it a bit because I do believe you were trying to avoid scratching in the lower left corner pocket. Now, based on the reaction the white did on this shot, I think the only suggestion I can make is take off the right spin. That way, the white can just draw itself over to the side rail, and I think one of two things are going to happen. You're either going to run into the black to where you can push it closer to the right middle, and then you have a relatively easy pattern of being able to play the yellow into the left, and then finishing off with the black to the right. Or when the white hits this side rail, it'll pass by the black. And especially with how hard you hit this shot, it'll just continue to pass by to where you'll have a clear shot at the last yellow into the left middle to where you can play a stop shot and then just play the black into the right lower corner pocket. So I think the simplest lesson here is that you just didn't need to use any right spin. And then of course, if you'd have just chose the correct power, then the white would have just landed right around here to where you still would have had an easier out to finish off this rack with the yellow. So this is all I have for you on rack one. Now let's check out rack two. All right, Tian, you're off to a great start finishing off rack one in only one inning. And you did win that rack as player two. So this is player two breaking here. It looks like, again, you made both a blue and a yellow, so you'll have a choice at what set you're going to be. And I like that you're choosing yellow. Okay, good shot. We're now done with that half of the table and only have to focus on this half of the table. But it should be that you're going to play this yellow here that you're fairly straight on and play the next yellow that's in between those three blues. Yep, just like that. You can then follow forward and play the last yellow in the bottom left corner as well. And this is looking like a break and run as the black should be going into the right middle.
Ta-da. <laughs> Very well done. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love the edits here. So that was actually really good. You'd actually think that there's not any type of comments I can give when you broke and ran the table, particularly because you broke and ran with the pattern that I even saw right after the break. But there is only one thing I can comment on, so let's go back and take a look at that. So here's the only spot in rack two that I wanted to comment on, which is going to be with your break in comparison to the way that you broke in rack one because I really liked the way that you broke in rack one because it's very similar to my classic break that I demonstrate in my breaking an eight ball rack two ways video, where you slightly cut the head ball on whatever side that you're breaking from and then have the white come over to the side rail and then spin back towards the middle of the table. Because that's pretty much what you did. The only reason why your white ended up towards the head of the table is because it got bumped by a couple of balls as it was heading towards the middle of the table. But on this break here, he did something completely different. So let's watch this break here, and I'll even throw back up rack one so you can have a side-by-side -side comparison and see the difference in the cue ball paths between the two breaks. So we can see in rack two, your white comes completely behind the rack and comes all the way around and would have ended up over by the head of the table had it not been bumped by a ball and land near the left middle pocket, which was to your favor, because then you were able to run the table after the break. Whereas in on rack one, your white comes off of the left side rail and then spins back towards the middle of the table, but then gets bumped by a ball and ends up over by the upper right corner pocket. Now which one of these breaks are you trying to do consistently? Because if it were up to me, I would rather see the break from rack one because it's just easier to control having the white come off of one side rail and then spin back towards the middle of the table than to try to go three rails behind the rack to land near the middle of the table because the likelihood of the white running into another ball is just really, really high. And that's all that I can really grab from this rack here let's check out rack three okay you're going into the third rack still as player two because you've broken ran the previous rack as player two so let's see what you got here <laughs> what is that what was that let's go back and look at that again <laughs> well, that's definitely a very animated way of watching you make the black on the break. But if I remember the rules correctly, that doesn't exactly count as a win. You're actually supposed to just re-rack the balls and then just break again, which you do end up doing, and we're going to call that the fourth rack. So here we are with rack four, and you're still going to be breaking as player two. Now, before we watch this rack, I do want to make a correction on what I thought were the rules at establishing a group. Because back over on rack one, I had said that since you made both blue and yellow on the break, I thought you had a free choice at what set you wanted to be, regardless if you make your next shot. If I had reread the rules correctly, you're not able to establish a group on the break. You can only establish a group after the break. So regardless if you make a ball on the break or not, the table is still considered open. And on rack one, you started with a combination on the blue, and therefore player one was blue on that rack, and player two was yellow. So again, correct me if I do have that wrong, but now let's watch this rack. Okay, again, we see the white go behind the rack and almost scratch in the bottom right corner pocket. You did make a yellow on the break, so you're still shooting as player two, but you have an open table. And it looks like you're going to choose blue. Okay, good shot there for the left middle. But now I'm wondering, what are you going to do with the blue that is also on the left side rail?
Okay, you might have an opportunity to try to bump into the blue that's on the left side rail if you shoot this one here in the top left. That might have been what you were trying to do, but now it's crucial that you get position on that last blue after you shoot this one. Okay, did you get it? Or does the yellow block the path in order to make it? And it must have. So now you're on two full innings, and we're now going to see what player one can do with the yellow. And you play a safety. So this might be interesting because if I remember what you said earlier, if you foul, player one is going to have a free shot, which you do foul here. So now you can do whatever you want as player one. Just don't pocket the black because then you lose and then you still get to shoot. So I actually think you wanted to make that ball on your free shot, but you're still now shooting as player one as that last shot was your free shot. Okay, it looks like this yellow will go to the right middle. Good shot there. That was a good shot. Now, does this yellow pass by the other one to the left middle? Okay, it does. Okay, so we're going to have to screw back on this one so we can have a closer shot at the black. But the black should most likely go to the top right corner pocket. Nice shot. Nicely done. Okay, so that is four racks that you were able to complete in three innings, which is really good. On this particular rack, I think I did see a spot that I can comment on. So let's go take a look at it. So I think this is the only spot in rack four that I wanted to comment on, which is the opening shot after your break. All of the other things that you heard me mention while you were playing through this rack kind of reiterate and reemphasize points that I previously made. But this point here, I want to strongly reemphasize, which is pattern selection. So at this spot here, you chose to play this blue into the bottom left corner pocket, and I think you had a touch of topspin on the white to where it came over here and hit the short rail, and then rolled to about right here, and then you played this blue into the left middle, and the white rolled right about here, and then you proceeded to run the rest of the blues. But while you were doing that, you heard me mention, what do you plan on doing with this blue here? Because you had an opportunity to make it better when you shot this blue into the top left corner pocket and I kind of thought you would have tried to clip it to where you can push it a little closer to the rail and then hopefully the white would have ended out over here to where when you play this blue you'll have a better chance at getting position on that final blue and then playing the black into the top right corner pocket. So with this particular layout I consider this blue to be a trouble spot. And the principle that I like to play by is try to deal with your trouble spots as soon as possible. So this is what I would suggest here. You could still play this blue into the bottom left, but instead of having your white land over here to play this blue like this and have your white go this way, all I would change is putting screw with a touch of left spin on the white so that the white will come and hit the rail over here and then hopefully spin its way back over here to play position on this blue now because then you can play this blue into the bottom left and then kind of hold position to play this blue back into the left middle like you did but you're now at an angle to where you can just allow the white to just roll forward and then you have an open shot here to eliminate your trouble spot. And then more than likely, if I want to try to draw the rest of the pattern, is to have the white roll forward somewhere right around here to where you can play this blue and then try to get the white to come this way. And this is the rest of the pattern. This blue would go here. You can roll the cue ball to right around here and then just play a stop shot 
on the blue here, and then still finish off with the black going into the top right. So really just one minor change on the pattern that you would have played, and I think you would have been able to break and run the table. Now having said that, that doesn't mean that you couldn't have broken and ran the table with the pattern that you chose. Because like I said earlier, I think when you shot this ball here into the top left, you really needed to clip this ball here just to push it closer to the side rail as you were trying to get position on the next to last blue here. If you were able to do that, you probably still would have been able to run the table. But as I mentioned before, the principle is if you're able to identify a trouble ball, try to deal with it as soon as possible if you're able to. When you're able to do that, I bet you you'll have more chances at being able to break and run the table successfully. So Tian, this is what I have for you after watching you play through four racks of black ball. You were able to complete everything in only three innings, which is super awesome. And if I were to try to rate you in our APA league system that we have here in the United States, I would probably put you around a mid-level six to maybe even a low seven. You have really good queuing action on the white and your ability to pot balls is also really good. I would just like to see more improvements on your pattern selections when you're running the table. And that's why you heard me comment on that the most during the course of this video. So right now, I would like to thank you for the opportunity you gave me to be able to review your game. I hope that the advice that I was able to provide, you'll be able to find useful in order to continue to improve your game. So viewers, what do you think of that assessment? Do you agree or disagree with any of my points? And I'm not too familiar with the rules of black ball, so feel free to correct me on anything that I said regarding the rules. And just like always, if you thought there was a different pattern selection or some type of advice that you'd want to give TN as well, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below with the timestamp of the shot and the advice that you'd want to give. And if you like what you saw, then give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Take care, everybody.